Honorable Dr. Rick Wallace here. I uh, hope that everything is going well on your end. Uh, I just want to stop in. Uh, I actually have what I hope to be a very powerful teaching moment. Um, the one thing I can tell you in life is that you're never going to find this place where you learn some secret of how to circumvent life's challenges, life difficult, life's difficult moments, uh, those moments that can be frightening and sometimes overwhelming. You, you, you're not going to ever reach a point to where life just sits up and says, okay, you've passed the test. Everything's smooth sailing from here. And, you know, it would be wonderful. It was. I wish I could tell you that this, that the vicissitudes of life are not going to roll into your paradise unannounced and, and shake things up. I'm not going to tell you that once you get past this certain point that everything's going to be smooth sailing. And every time that I somehow get caught up in what's happening in the moment and start to believe, man, it's finally, I'm always reminded of this. And uh, I thought that this would be a teaching moment. See, the one thing that I've tried to do over the course of my life and anything that I've done when I'm sharing where I'm at in my life, I'm also talking about the challenges that I have to deal with consistently to be there. Um, and those who know me sort of know my story. Uh, when it comes down to uh, the financial material side of things, I'm nowhere near where I once was. I'm climbing my way back. But in the sense of understanding my purpose and focusing on my purpose and making myself be impactful, I'm doing that daily. I tell people all the time that the first half of my life was about me and the second half is about building and leaving a legacy. And yes, the part of that legacy is a financial legacy. So I'm not uh, diminishing uh, the importance in the right frame and context for developing wealth and doing all the things you need to do to make sure that a lot of the stresses in our lives are no longer there. What I'm, uh, what I'm attempting to get at is that center in on your purpose, center in on your design, center in on your responsibility to God first, because what it's going to do is take you out of yourself. It's going to immediately remove you out of yourself so that uh, one of the few things, one of the things, you know, uh, I'm human, so I'm not going to say I never do it. But one of the things that I, I, I don't find myself doing that people tend to do when things start to go crazy, and I'm in one of those moments. So I decided to use the moment while I'm in it. See, it's easy to talk about something after you overcome it and you've reestablished your sense of confidence, your sense of self, your sense of purpose, and everything's feeling good. It's easy to come back, but when it's in those moments, one thing that I've trained myself to do is not to respond to how I feel. Because some days I just don't feel like it. Some days, it, uh, no matter how I try to prime myself, you know, something happens and I'm just not in the mood, but there's still work to be done. That's still a challenge. My responsibility to this world, my responsibility to God, my responsibility to my wife and my family and my children, isn't contingent upon me feeling great every day. It's contingent upon me understanding my responsibility uh, to my God, to my, to my wife, to my children, to my destiny. And so my destiny says some days it's going to suck, but you got to get up and put in work. Some days you're not going to have the answer, but you got to forge through anyway. So, and, and so it's all these things. And at the heart of this thing, I tell you, told you all the guys, man, why does this guy talk about gratitude so much? because gratitude is the gateway to abundance. And when I talk about abundance, I'm not talking about money in and of itself. I'm talking about abundance in the way of joy, abundance in the way of happiness, abundance in finance as well, but abundance in your relationships. They're rich, they're fulfilling, they're enjoyable. When you have a heart of gratitude, you're literally opening the gate uh, of abundance for life to flow through you. But here's the thing. Gratitude comes from an ability to see things differently than most people naturally see them. We function pr primarily with a heightened sense of trouble. We are able to identify what's wrong in our lives much more rapidly than we do uh, the things that are worth being thankful for, the things that are subtle in our lives that bring so much uh, significance when you look back and you peel back the layers. There are some immediate things that automatically shake us and we will identify them. Uh, I'm no different than anybody else. What things may shake me may be different, but I have my Achilles, so to speak. Things that when they happen, and, 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 and 
my thing isn't directly money, but it can be how money affects people I love and what I'm capable of doing about it at any time. That's a big one for me. I don't like my family to hurt. I don't like people I love, my friends to hurt. And when something happens and it's out of my reach or my control, it bothers me. And so that's one, that's a big one for me. And it can get overwhelming at times because there's just certain things going to come along that's a part of your training that you are going to look at and it's going to be overwhelming. If everything you faced was easy for you to handle, you're not getting stronger. You're not getting better. You're not getting sharper in the mind. You're not building a deeper confidence in your purpose and your sense of self. If everything that shows up, you can just knock it out. Sometimes you got to press against the wall. Sometimes you're going to find your back against the wall. The wonderful thing I love about having my back against the wall, yes, I just made that statement, is that I don't have a choice but to fight out. When you got room to back up and it's uncomfortable in front of you, you, you tend to back up. But when you're against that wall, you've got to come out swinging. You've got to come out performing. You've got to figure it out. And that's what life is about. Life is not, not about circumventing the vicissitudes of life, circumventing the hardships, circumventing the struggles, getting around the problems, or dodging and avoiding the obstacles. Life is about how you deal with them. Your destiny is going to be determined about how you engage life. And if you engage life from a heart of gratitude, it doesn't mean that you, doesn't, you don't see the problem in front of you or the situation in front of you. It means that you have a better, better sense of sight, that you have a spiritual insight or a spiritual vision that allows you to see things that are not yet manifested in the physical, but you know are coming. That's what faith is all about. Faith is sitting up saying, I see the facts, but there's something in my spirit that transcends the facts. The fact says it's pretty tough right now. The facts, the facts say it's pretty dark right now, but there's something inside of my spirit that allows me to see beyond the moment. And I see that in my design is everything I need to overcome it. And see, again, it's easy to do this when everything's flowing, when you, you can see everything lining up. And, but when you get one of those gut punches, and it's coming, if you ain't got one, you, you're going to have one. You're going to have more than one. But And when you get that gut punch and it bends you over, and you're trying to catch your breath, but at the same time know you need to perform, what do you do? Well, if, if, you, if you look at the Book of Lamentations, and you know, I don't care what your faith base is, to be totally honest. I'm, I'm, respond, I'm, I'm more concerned about how you relate to God, uh, what denomination you are, whatever, all that stuff, what, how do you, how do, I want you to connect to your purpose, your designer. Figure that out between you and whoever, but I want you to connect to your purpose. So it, I'm using this reference, but it applies in so many ways. One thing that I just constantly stick to when I think about the Book of Lamentation, that's a part where Je Jeremiah says, these things I recall to mind, talking about the things in the past that he had been through, uh, being thrown in a hole, life in jail. I mean, all kinds of things he had to go through. He said, these things I recall to mind, and therefore I have hope. I've been through so many things, and every time that I thought I was out and I stood, I gained ground. Every time that I thought it was over and I stayed still and I focused and I trusted my destiny, I came through. Every time that people were writing me off and saying that it's no way they're gonna that he's going to come out of it, I stood still and I came through. Every time it should have been over, it wasn't. These things I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. There is absolutely no time in your life that is not something in your life that you have to be grateful for. But we tend to allow the things that are, that, that are negative in our lives to overshadow it, and then we close the gate of abundance. Thankfulness and gratefulness and gratitude open up the gates. It is the gateway to abundance in every area of your life. When you can find a way to be great, I'm not saying uh, become a, a masoch uh, masochist or a sadist that just loves pain. I'm not saying that you should enjoy the pain. I'm saying that you should appreciate the moment because out of the pain comes a graduation into a higher sense of self, a higher sense of purpose, a better power, a better force, greater confidence, and a true uh, understanding and faith and trust in your design and your designer. See, you got to understand if I was designed to do something, everything that I need to do it is in the design. I may have not, I may have not discovered it yet, but it's there. And, you know, one of the things that happens is we create our state. We create our state. Now, we are being governed by our thoughts, but the truth of the matter is we are distinct from our thoughts, meaning that our thoughts don't have to control us. We have the power to control our thoughts. 
Now, here's the thing. 80%, 75 to 80% of the thoughts that the average person has during the day is negative. You're feeding your mind a negative idea. It's about what's going to happen, what's going to go wrong, what this is going to, I mean, all of these negative things that go through the mind, 75 to 80%, this is scientific, this is studying, I mean, individual after individual after individual after individual, and finding that on average, the average person has anywhere from 60 to 70,000 thoughts per day, and of that, 80%, up to 80% of them are negative. That Those are setting expectations. You are literally creating a situation where you're starting to expect things. And I tell you all the time that God meets you at the level of your expectations. What you are thinking is producing an expectation. And if what you focus on are the negatives, and this is the crazy thing, until something actually becomes a reality, it's an empty worry if you're worrying about it. Uh, another scientific study shows that 40% of what people worry themselves about never ever happens. 40%. So you stressed out, you made yourself ill, you've, 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 you've not been at the height of your game because of something that never, ever took place. It never happened. Another, what, 12% is about things that have already happened. You're still stressing about something that's over with. It's done. It's behind you. Learn from it and move on then you know it gets down to it it breaks it down to all these different things that you're worried about that then another part of it is things that if you just do what you need to do and take care of your business you've got it so no need to worry about it you got it it's a roughly about somewhere to 47 percent of the things we worry about on a regular basis are actually going to come and then if it's something that you can't control you learn and deal with how you go get over one thing that i don't do getting back to this and i'm, I'm human so i'm not gonna say i never do it but one thing that i don't do is go around with the question why. I, I, I prefer the, the question that begins with what. Instead of asking why is it happening, I, I, I ask myself, what am I going to do about it? Because knowing why won't change it. Now, it's okay to know why, but that's not how I lead into trying to solve a problem. See, now, eventually, I need to know what I'm going to do about it because knowing what I'm going to do about it is going to immediately engage me in a solution. The moment you begin the process of solving something, the stress levels drop because you're in control. You're coming up with a solution. It's when you're sitting back and you are allowing the thought and the idea to consume you. Now, at some point, I may look back and say, okay, what brought that about? That's the why, but it's after the solution or after I'm deeply rooted in the solution and I know that the solution is inevitable, then I can look back, why? Why do I wanna know why? Because I don't want it to happen again. And if it's something I did, I wanna be in control of it. But that's just at the back end. The first thing I'm thinking when something goes on is what am I gonna do about it? Because if I, the moment that I take control, the moment I decide this is what I'm gonna do, now I'm in control. Stress levels go down and now, cortisol levels uh, decline, adrenaline levels decline, blood is redistributed to the uh, areas that I need to really focus and think, the brain, especially the prefrontal lobe, I mean the prefrontal context, the frontal lobe, and that's important. But the more you stress, the harder it is to think, the poorer the decision making. When you make decisions, when you're in a state of anxiety, when you're in a state of stress and worry, those aren't going to be your best decisions. Why? Because the oxygen you need and, 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 and the energy you need in the brain isn't there. It's in your body's in fight or flight mode when you're stressed. All of your blood and oxygen, uh, not all of it, but a vast majority of your blood and oxygen are in your extremities, your arms and your legs, your hands. And it's meant to defend yourself or to flee. And once you get to a safe place, you start to come down. Now, the problem is the kind of stressing you're doing, that isn't an immediate life-threatening thing. It's an ongoing idea. And so you've got to deal with the idea. My thing is I try to simplify it. I try to simplify whatever it is I'm going through. And you've, if you've heard me before, you've heard me say this. When I'm simplifying what I'm, what I'm facing, I'm not looking at all the intricate details. I'm not looking at all the elements and components of the equation that need to be solved. At that moment, I just need something to bring me back, release 
uh, to diminish the, uh, stop the production of cortisol and adrenaline, uh, to get the blood flow back to the places I need to really think. And the way to do that with me is to tell myself, you're built for this, right? And you know, I look myself in the mirror and say, I'm built for this. And that's been an ongoing thing. I'm built for this. I don't care what it is. If I'm on this earth and I'm going through it, I'm built for it because the creator put it in my design. He knew in his omniscience that at some point I would come to this point and this is what I would deal with. This is what I would face and this is uh, uh, what would happen. And deep down inside, even if I don't know the answer right now, the ability to get the answer is there. There's nothing in this world and life I'm going to face that's going to be something I can't overcome. That's the belief I have. And so what it does is it immediately calms me down. It puts me in a place where I can start to think. The problem is the vast majority of people in this world, not just in America, but in this world, but especially in the Western Hemisphere, are reactionary. The moment something goes wrong, they, they react to it instead of stepping back, evaluating it, and responding. It's just the same way in medicine. In medicine, uh, when you're going through a treatment process, you have responses and you have reactions. If they say you responded to the medicine, that means it's good. If you re had a reaction to the medicine, that's bad. Just in life in general, when you react to something, it's impulsive and it isn't going to be necessarily the best decision. Sometimes you might like luck up and hit the right decision, but you're going to be better in a position when you step back and you evaluate your destiny and understand your purpose and realize your connection with the Almighty, with God, with the universe. However, you see this superior force that puts you in the play in this game called life. When you sit up and understand that connection, you understand that it's absolutely nothing that you're going to come up against that you can't overcome. So you can't say you're more than a conqueror and fold. You can't say no weapon formed against you will prosper and fold. You can't say that 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 you you don't have fear, but a a, a sound mind and and fold. I, 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 that, I mean, you can't sit up and consistently speak these things that you've been trained to systematically speak and still fold. You can't live a defeated life and speak these things and truly understand. See, when you have a connection. It's not so much the words you speak. Now they have power. There's power in the tongue, but there's so much power in the thought processes because it's the thought processes that produce the word out of the abundance of the heart, the deepest recesses of the soul or the mind. The mouth speaks. So when you're speaking and you're saying these things, man, I can't win for losing. Uh, man, this sucks. Man, I'm just not good at this. All these things that put a negative image in your head are actually coming from your thoughts. And you are not the victim of your thoughts, you are the control of your thoughts, but now your thoughts are controlling you. You have to engage and you have to come up with this primitive idea of who you are. You are, an, you are a creation with infinite power. You have the ability to call things that are not as though they were. When you are, what you don't understand is people here, when the people here call things that are not as though they were, they see the positive when in, in the term. They see, okay, you can say things and do all this. And whether they believe it or not, that's how they see it. But what you don't get is there's a flip side to that. You can call negative things that are not as though they were. And you can manifest them that way. You can speak things into your life that weren't coming. You can sit up and understand that you have a responsibility to guard your tongue, to guard your mind. You have a responsibility, it's over and over again. Outside of the command to know the word in the Bible, the next most frequent command is to guard your heart and minds in different ways. To have an understanding of what you're thinking at all times. To cast down arguments. To bring thoughts into captivity. You are what you think. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. What are you thinking deep down inside? What are you succumbing to? And I'm saying this because, you know, I, I, I try not to give this idea that I've always got it figured out. I'm always just, you know, great. I refuse to be beaten. I refuse to be beaten down. I refuse to be overwhelmed. But I get hit hard. And sometimes I get knocked off my feet. And sometimes it's easier to sit up and go, what in the heck is going on? But at some point in time, now, as a general rule, I have uh, what I call a 90 second rule. And it's like something bad happens. I give myself 90 seconds to feel some kind of way about it. And then 
when it, after a minute and a half, it's time to okay process it, deal with it, and move on. It doesn't mean that it it, it isn't significant. You know, it could be very significant. It means that sitting up and allowing it to consume me isn't productive. It doesn't work to my destiny. It doesn't work to my purpose. I've got to be able to evaluate it and say, okay, I'm gonna have to deal with this, but I'm built for it. And now, Rick, put your work in. Do what you got to do. And, and, and the one thing I can tell you is the way that God designed us is that when we're working in our purpose and we focus on our purpose, we get the fulfillment and the joy that will counter any negative information we get in a day. If we are helping somebody, and our purpose is always about making somebody else's life better, and in the process, doing the same for ourselves. But it's always about what are you doing outside of this? See, if you're so focused on yourself, you lose the capacity to help others because now you're so consumed with you. If you want to make you better, reach out into the world, make the world better. Find the way you're gifted and prepared and experienced to make the world better. Trust it, but you've got to get to a point to where you stop reacting and you start building on an understanding that in your design is your capacity and every resource you need to make this happen. Your greatest resource isn't anything you have in your bank account. It isn't any phone numbers you have in your phone. It isn't the information of the degrees you have on your wall. Your greatest resource will always remain your greatest resource. And that is the resourcefulness that God put in your design, the ability to find what you don't have and, and need. And every last one of you has it. Every last one of you has the capacity to look inside, to see what it is that you that you need, and then to go get it. I don't care what it is. And it doesn't have to come in a traditional sense. Think outside the box. Let the spirit that's in you communicate with the spirit and consciousness of God. Become one with God, and then everything that you can possibly need will be communicated to you in ways you never imagined. That's what God, he designs you to infuse yourself with him. And, and, and however you see it, but you are designed to be infused with the pure consciousness that knows all to have the answers. And they come in different ways. You got different people who have these gifts in different ways. And it's just a different le level and a different method of being able to communicate with the consciousness. See, the consciousness of God knows everything that has happened, is happening, and will happen. You got some people that are very good at becoming into your life and telling you about your past. You have other people who will come in your life and they're very gifted about being able to tell you about what you're enduring and what you're going through now. Then you have other people who will come in and they can tell you things that will happen. And all it is is having a different frequency and connection with the consciousness and awareness and the knowledge of God and being able to receive it. See, we cut off and we tend to focus and trust solely what we can see. And we miss so much of the ability to communicate at such a high level that a lot of the things we need to calm us down are in the communication we have with God. And that's where I'm going to leave this at. For the people who pray, for the people who pray, here's something for you. And I've taught this for a long time. I've answered questions about prayer, but I'm going to tell you something. Don't get to the point to where your prayer is so repetitive that it becomes perfunctory. And what I mean by that is it, it's just something you show up and do every day or uh, that you do before you go to bed at night or uh, that you do when you get to church or when you get to work. Some people do it in their car. Wherever you do it at, inside of the bed, wherever, don't make it so perfunctory that it's just something that's repetitive. You're missing the point. This is your opportunity to plug into the source. This is the opportunity to open up to revelation. This is the opportunity to open up to power. This is where some of the greatest ideas come from. When you go to bed at night, connect with God. This won't be a traditional prayer. You won't be on your knees. You won't have your eyes, your, your head bowed. You'll be there and you'll be in communication with God. And you will allow things that, that you can never imagine. These things, nobody is, you know, I, I think one of the, one of, one of the verses uh, says that God is not a, a, a favor of, doesn't play favorites. Uh, and what does that mean? That means that if I got it, you got it. Just because somebody's performing better in life in a certain area doesn't mean that you don't have access. Now, I believe everybody has a genius. Everybody has a gift. Now, that's unique. But your capacity is equal. 
Understand what I'm saying? You're not meant to do the same thing as everybody else, but your capacity to have an impact on this world is equal. What you do with the capacity is going to determine where you register on your impact, how much of a legacy you leave behind, how much you get to experience life and be fulfilled by what you do. You, get, you can get so caught up in rigidity that you lock God out. The thing is, the one thing I can tell you is the more connected you become to God and the more you begin to understand why you were designed, why you're here, why you do this. Uh, I tell people all the time, when you discover your purpose, it will explain your pain. When you discover your purpose, it will explain your pain. It will explain all the things that you went through. You go, what in the world? Why is this happening to me? When you understand, when you gain an understanding and a connection to your purpose, it will explain your pain. And not only will it explain your pain, it will provide a, an impetus uh, called passion. And that will be this passion to live it out. That will be this yearning, this push that you can't explain, that gets you up in the morning, even when you don't feel like it, even when people are talking behind your back even when all of the things that you think you need to make it happen isn't there in front of you. When you decide that you're going to live in your purpose, you'll get up every day and there'll be something that says, I don't know how I'm going to get it done, but I'm going to get it done. And there'll be something in you that says, I will not quit. One time, a long time ago, I was going through a difficult time and I was reading the book of Hebrews and the 10th chapter and towards the end, it says that, his soul finds no pleasure in those who draw back. But then it follows, says, but we are not of those who draw back. We are those who keep on to the believing and the saving of the soul. And, 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 and there's no reward in quitting. There's no reward in folding. There's no reward in giving up. There's no reward in complaining. There's no reward in whining. Where well, the reward comes is when you stand your ground and you work your field and you believe that what you were put here to do, you're equipped to do. If it was easy to understand, everybody would be doing it. If it was easy to get done, everybody would do it. it, it it's not about ease has nothing to do with ease at all. Matter of fact, I can tell you everything in this world worth having is on the other side of fear and pain, everything. You're gonna have to be willing to push through. You're gonna have to be willing to stand up when it doesn't, when you don't feel like it. I mean, when the literally the breath is out of you, you're gonna have to stand up, hold your head up, square your shoulders and determine I was built for this and I'm gonna see all the way to the end. If I have breath in my body, I'm here for a reason. Matter of fact, as I close, as I as I close out this, 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 let me tell you something. I've been through enough in life that I've developed this sense. If it gets too easy, I stop. Because if it's too easy, I'm going in the wrong direction. And that's not how most people think. Most people think if it's too hard, I stop and I go in the other direction. It's not that I have a desire for pain. I just understand that I grow through resistance. That's something my great grandfather taught me a long time ago. I grow through resistance. I grow through challenge. I grow through obstacles. I grow through failures. That's how I grow. If I start getting and everything's rolling, I'm like, I'm going in the wrong direction. And so it's like, I, I, I wake up every morning and I know there are gonna be challenges, but I tell myself I'm built for this. I open up my heart and I look at the reasons I have to be grateful. And I mean, it's so many things. I said this the other day, that a lot of us, when we're trying to think of something to be grateful about, we look at the things that we have or the things that are happening. And I do that. You know, I look at the fact that I have a beautiful wife, uh, some unbelievably gorgeous and creative and loving kids, uh, an opportunity to change the world. Those are the things that I wake up every morning and I'm grateful for out the box. Then I look at all the other things and it, a lot of it is on the positive side. When I say positive things that are happening, but I also look at, I didn't die last night, something that didn't happen. You know, I didn't get any bad news of a loss in the family. Now, some days I'm going to be able to say that because somebody's going to call me and say, hey, did you know so-and-so passed away? But when I don't have that call, that's something to be grateful for. I mean, 
it's so many things that could be wrong that are not. That's a reason to be grateful. Look, there's a force in this world, however you view this force, it's a negative force and it would love nothing more for you than to sit up and see everything wrong in the fold. And when you do, it wins. Learn how to understand the power in your thinking. Let your, let your ability to connect with God frame how you see life. And then like, when I lost my stepmom, somebody I love dearly, uh, when I lost her in 2005, I had five months earlier, lost one of my sisters. And I was sitting there and my cousin actually did the eulogy and he went to Job chapter one and two. And he, after reading the text, his question was simple. Can God trust you with trouble? And I've spoken on that a number of, number of occasions. And at the end of the day, that's the question that tied to your destiny. Can God trust you with trouble? Because see, anybody can perform when all of the uh, numbers are in place, when, when the lines and the columns add up and when, when there's no resistance and everything seems to be okay. But can God trust you with trouble? See, the one thing I can tell you is that everybody I've ever studied that was trusted with trouble and stood the test received the reward. And I don't care, again, this isn't about any particular religion. This is about understanding the power of being able to connect with your, 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 your design and then your designer and understand that a designer that is omniscient, a designer that's omnipotent, a designer that is omnipresent, a designer that has all of this benevolence is going to design you equipped. He didn't give you a flawed design. Now, you've done things to try to deploy it, but that's another thing I love about this thing. No matter where you've been, no matter what decisions you made, no matter how poor of a decision you made in the past, guess what? You did not disqualify yourself from your purpose. That's like the most beautiful truth in the world to me, is that in my most stupid moments, I didn't disqualify myself. The dumbest decisions didn't disqualify me. What does that mean? That means no, where, no matter where you're at right now, there's still something in this world for you to do. There's still an opportunity to stand up to the responsibility that you have to your designer. And with that being said, I'm gonna get off of here. Uh, you guys have an unbelievable day. Uh, I wish you the best. Live your life on full. Take it to life. Don't let life keep bringing it to you. Get up in the morning and take it to life. Suck it up. Breathe in the air that God gave you. You're going to take about 17,000 to 30,000 of those breaths over the course of this day. Every last one of them is something to be grateful for. Go get it. A fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage. Uh, initiative and restoring ghetto for ghetto's forgotten daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.